my friend Melissa, whom you saw in the video, said watching me is like seeing someone run a marathon without a finish line. And that's a really accurate description of what it's like to undergo years of cancer treatment. I wake up each day and I run and run and run and run. And when I go to bed each night, I fully expect to wake up the next morning and do it all over again. I'm lucky I have the personality that adapts easily to new situations. I've had CT scans an average of every three months for the past four years. So it's very often that I'm faced with really big news. If it's good news, that's great. If it's less than good news, or even really discouraging news, like this recent MRI scan, I admit it's really hard for a few days. We have sleepless nights, and it seems like it's at the front of my head all the time. But, but after a while, the, just the everyday goings-on of life comes back to the forefront where it should be, and we just move on. It's just kind of the new, normal part of our life. Even on the days when I'm feeling worse each day, or I feel a tumor in my neck get larger, or I see pigment creeping across my chest, I remind myself that just because it's a negative trend now doesn't mean it's going to continue to be negative. I could wake up tomorrow morning and start feeling a little bit better. And I don't just say that because I've felt that many times over the course of these last four years. I've seen tumors disappear. I've seen pigment fade away, and I've seen myself feeling like an entirely different person literally overnight. Overall, I just don't let trends become predictors of how my disease will manifest itself. I have fear, doubt, and frustration at times, but it never even comes close to all the hope and faith that I have that I'm going to be rid of this someday. <laughs> It's hard to explain why I believe this, I, but I do. I just, I simply believe it. I'd like to share some wise words I heard a couple of years ago while I was lounging on the couch watching one of my favorite channels, the Food Network. They were showing a chefography on the British chef and author named Nigella Lawson. Ms. Lawson, who's only in her 40s, has already lost her mother, younger sister, and husband to cancer. And in the interview, they asked her how she could possibly deal with such heartbreak. She said this, and I quote, the cliche is that life must go on, but that's not it. Life does go on, and if you don't live it, you're going to miss it. I'd like to close by sharing something that's become a family tradition since my diagnosis. Each night, Ren and I tuck Jack into bed and we take turns talking about our gratefuls, all the things that we're grateful for that happened that day. Being a cancer patient, the old adage is true for me. I'm grateful for all the little things and sometimes I go on and on and Ren has to cut me off. <laughs> Regardless, Ren and I have tried very hard to encourage a sense of optimism in Jack and to acknowledge the many blessings in his life. <laughs> I think we have succeeded because he is definitely a glass is half full kind of kid. Here is what Jack had to say last night. I am grateful for mommy, daddy, bunny, Zoe, and Tony. Bunny and Tony are his favorite stuffed animals and Zoe is our cat. I'm grateful for my family and friends. I'm grateful that Gran and Granddad are coming to visit from Massachusetts. We haven't had fish in a while, so I'm grateful we had fish for dinner. <laughs> it's so exciting that Mommy's speech is tomorrow night. Where is it? <laughs> I'm grateful that Mommy had radiation today and that the tumor in her chest is getting smaller. And I'm grateful Mommy's feeling better. Thank you, Jack. And <laughs> and I'd like to add a heartfelt thank you to everyone at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, especially to my doctors, John Thompson and Cassian Yee. 
who have given us so much support and given us so many treatment options. And finally, a huge thank you to everyone here tonight for supporting this outstanding institution. Thank you.